Hi, everyone. February 7, 2020. Why a shadowy tech firm with ties to Israel or Israeli intelligence is running doomsday election simulations? Simulation. Election 2020. All hell breaks loose. Martial law declared. The end of American, quote-unquote, democracy. The end of American democracy actually started and very quickly closed the door when we started calling this country a democracy. Yes, let's fool Americans. Let's stop using that constitutional republic thing. Call it a democracy. They'll forget we're a constitutional republic. And when... It's very obvious that we're no longer a constitutional republic. They won't even have that in their mind. They'll just think that they're still living in the United States of America, the freest country in the world. They have all of their constitutional rights because they think they live in a democracy. Okay. I'm going to be focusing on the prepping part, how government and media are prepping America for a failed 2020 election. I will link below to everything. I'm just going to be reading a few excerpts from these very, very good, good, well-investigated articles, like real journalism. Oh, wow. And I will also link to Operation Blackout, conducted by Cyber Reason. Cyber Reason, deep ties to American and Israeli intelligence. So, simulation, October 2019, coronavirus. Three months later, coronavirus. And based on what I've been looking at, I think that this simulation thing, some of the details may pan out differently, but my hunch, well, when you see some of what mainstream media is reporting, even within the last 24 hours, I think some of you might agree with me that, wow, they're pushing this narrative because this is the plan. What's that plan? I'll get to it in one sec. But I also think a lot of destruction is going to take place between now and November 2020. A lot of people will be destroyed before we get to that election. So, I will link below to the actual Cyber Reason, their Operation Blackout Summary of Events. I'm going to read just a little bit of this article. Neither a man, nor a crowd, nor a nation can be trusted to act humanely or to think sanely under the influence of a great fear. Yeah. Well, Americans are not a real courageous people. A whole lot of them are scared little puppies. Yeah, children who just want to be protected by mommy and daddy. Who's mommy and daddy? Authority figures. They're leaders. And it's unfortunate that we're in the condition that we are because there ain't no way to fight anything. And what is coming down the pike? Unfortunately, Americans won't stand together and they will fight one another. Now, I have said in several videos that 
Trump may very well have decided, made the decision, okay, I'll be the scapegoat. I'll be the scapegoat for an economic collapse. But it's the Trump supporters I'm worried about. Oh, yeah, I'm angry at the quote-unquote awake Trump supporters. They not recognizing that this guy ain't no different than the last guy. But I still don't want anyone hurt, harmed in any way. One of the videos that I posted was on the U.S.-China trade war that, well, went on incessantly. And how that trade war, and this is still a possibility, could bring down the global economy. Trump will be blamed, and those who are not Trump supporters will go after the Trump supporters, blaming you for supporting a guy that destroyed their life. The coronavirus, if that gains an awful lot of traction, in other words, more and more people die, the numbers begin to roll in like it's rather shocking. Well, the coronavirus is already having an effect on our global economy. That may very well bring down the economy. And I don't see a way for Trump supporters to get out of what has been assigned to them the scapegoat for whatever goes wrong. But I'm noticing articles and people are pinning the blame on Trump supporters and I'll show you what is happening around that. But as we get closer and closer to election 2020, Pay very close attention to mainstream media, they're, what they're reporting, the narrative. See if the chaos of election 2020, if that takes traction, and we hear that repeatedly, repeatedly, even more, if we hear it over and over again, the closer we get to election. They're already programming American people, the American people, with the 2020 election, already programming them to not believe any result regardless of the result. They're already programming them for foreign interference. Yeah. And I've been trying to imagine scenarios where Trump supporters are not blamed for whatever happens. I can't think of one. So if Trump wins, we saw in 2016, you know, the response of the uh, members on that blue team. And that was pretty wild. We have not really seen Americans behave as emotionally as the blue team members did. They were truly bona fide crazy. We've had three years of Antifa and other groups, university and college students. They calling anybody on the right a Nazi, a racist, a white supremacist, 
We've seen an awful lot of violence. We have seen that people do not know how to have adult conversation. Those on the blue team, we've seen their leaders go back shit crazy. Uh, but we've also seen Trump act like a high school bully. Look, I can't list all of what is going on, but I absolutely do believe, hope I'm wrong, but I do believe we're going to see more violence, tension, more of the uh, name calling and we're going to see a tremendous amount of censorship you know they have to get rid of that fake news to protect the American people from all of that fake news so social media platforms are really going to be ditching an awful lot of people. Why? Well, they want that official narrative going all the time. And the official narrative is, it's just a psyop to program the American mind. Um, so, it's unfortunate that we have never held anybody accountable for their lies. You know, Obama campaigned on holding accountable Bush, Cheney, uh, Rumsfeld, Colin Powell, accountable for their lies that led to the invasion of Iraq. When he became president, he said, well, let's not play the blame game and let's look forward instead of back. So what happened? Those on his team went for it. Trump campaigned on investigating the Clintons, saying things that the red team loved to hear. You should be in jail. Well, she is a criminal. Okay. A whole lot of truth came out of that mouth, just like a whole lot of truth came out of Obama's mouth. But when Trump became president-select, the first interview he gives, Hillary Clinton, well, the Clintons are good people, and she's been through a lot. So the Trump supporters said, what a brilliant move. Oh, he's playing 4D chess, Carol. Those arrests are coming. I will say it again. Trump, Pelosi, all of them. The Republicans, Democrats, setting all of us up to fight one another because that's what we're good at. We don't fight the real enemies. We fight one another. And that is unfortunate because I think the fighting will be pretty intense around election 2020. All right, so yeah, that narrative Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. Well, at least during that period of time, they did show evidence. Oh, much of the evidence was falsified. Colin Powell's you know, at the United Nations holding up the vial. Here, just this little amount could blow up the earth. Shock and awe. Then we learn it was a complete lie. And we never did anything about those lies. And when a people are saturated in lies 
and don't care to know the truth, really prefer the lies, then you have a nation of very lost, immoral people with not much substance in them. So when you pull the rug out from under them, they don't know who they are and they can't stand firm and calm amongst the chaos surrounding them. They don't have that ability because they've not done much work on their own self to bring them to that state. What am I saying? Number one, millions upon millions of Americans are in a circumstance and that circumstance has produced in them chronic stress. They've lost everything due to the, uh, the weather events or the fires. Or, yeah, the economy is not booming. And it's unfortunate that any of you support this guy. These gross, outrageous lies that you hear over and over and over again. Booming, 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 and income soaring, and Americans just doing fabulously, and families, uh, I, you know, somehow families are stronger in America. It's doing, you know, better than it ever has, and the best is yet to come, and you support this? It's, I, I don't even have words. I have no words for the supporting somebody who brings about those kinds of lies when nothing could be further from the truth. You know, how many billions did the Fed pour into the banks today? 47 yesterday, 97 the day before that. Billions and billions today. If the economy was booming, the Fed would not be doing that. We've got a global slowdown, and the United States has slowed down. The economy is not booming. And you know what? I, I'm tired of having to prove my every point. I, you think the economy is booming? Fabulous. Go for it. But you're going to be one of the Americans. When that rug is pulled out from under you, you're not going to have much strength to remain calm in the midst of the chaos. And that chaos, oh, it's coming. So the narrative now, yeah, the narrative, which we have been, well, I have been seeing, Election 2020, foreign interference. How do we protect our elections when we're not ready? Here, the headlines have been, uh, well, I've been reading them. Um, they're all also setting Americans up to have no confidence in their own system, setting Americans up uh, to not have faith in whatever result happens at all, especially when they get, you know, these headlines, hackers are coming for the 2020 election and we're not ready. Basically, Every U.S. national security leader is warning about foreign interference in the 2020 election. U.S. intel agencies, Russia and China, plotting to interfere in 2020 election. Experts on mainstream media, and they talking about how we're not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready. 2016, Russian, the Russians, they, they interfered in our election. 
Americans are such little kids. You just want to shake them. Uh, do you know that all major powers interfere in virtually every country? Well, if they have an interest in a particular candidate, they have an interest in the resources of that country. They all interfere, and the United States interferes all over the world. But hey, let's focus on Russia and their interference. And let's let's just do that, mm, Russia, 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 for three years. And then we're going to hold these impeachment hearings and impeachment trial. And of course, it's all a farce. It's all the distraction. But we haven't gotten ourselves ready for 2020? Really? Don't you think that's a little odd? So many odd things happen in this country, but Americans don't notice. That is what is scary. So, yeah, they write all of this stuff and provide no evidence. Because today, we have fallen into a state where they don't even have to produce any evidence anymore. At least back in 2003, there was a show. Hey, we've got the evidence. We've got the vial. We've got this, we've got this. Okay, go to war. When Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with it, but hey, forget about that part. Now, our intelligence agencies have been lying forever. Oh, but who cares about that? We'll just believe the next lie. But now they don't even present any. You know what that means? You know what that is a reflection of? The American people on the whole have stopped thinking, and they know it. They know it. And they have been easily uh, programmed to, well, kind of respond to life at a base level. Emotions, emotions. Appeal to the emotions. And facts and evidence are now obsolete. Opinion is on the same par as evidence. My opinion, that's good enough for me. You know, three years of listening to the left insult the right, call them names, and when the, the right or someone neutral asks, well, why are you claiming this person's a Nazi? They curse at you. They say, well, you support Trump. You know, Trump has been in the public eye my entire adult life. You know, as a Manhattanite, uh, Trump repulsed me. He was such an ego, maniacal nut job. You know, he was always seeking that press attention. You know, the real estate tycoon. The reality TV star, The Apprentice. He has been in the public eye for decades. Never once was he called a racist, but hey... Uh, when he gets selected to be the president, then we just throw that out. He's a racist. He's a, he's a Nazi. But nobody even stops to think, well, if he's such a bad racist and Nazi, how come this is just coming out now when... He's been in the public eye forever. Huh, interesting. They don't care. They don't care. And unfortunately, yeah, the young who attend university, college, we've seen the behavior. Whenever a conservative is invited to speak, they protest. They try to shut down free speech. And they think the conservative is a Nazi. So the social justice warriors are easily manipulated to do anything. And 
easily triggered for violence. I've seen the videos. In fact, whoa, <clears throat> thank my subscriber for sending this along, but take very seriously the condition of the American people because we're heading down what may very well be the dead end. And a whole lot has already transpired. I'm sure you've heard in your own communities, people yeah, you know, behaving in ways that, well, I uh, don't understand it, but, and, you know, violence kind of erupting out of nowhere, road rage, or, you know, just feeling that hostility or the anger, the tension, the stress from people. When people are chronically stressed, they have a tendency to regress to, you know, the lowest of behaviors, base behaviors, childlike, and easily, if they have a tendency for violence, it is so easily triggered now. But, yeah, take very seriously this guy's behavior and then imagine a frequency at a certain power level and a specific frequency to excite this guy's emotions. Out square! Slash his throat! Very fucking Republican! Suck my fucking balls! Say that one more time. Slash his Republican throat! Slash fascist his throat! Get the fashion! No, that was not staged. There's a lot of him out there. So we know that they have invisible weapons. And we know that they can target regions, populations within regions, or individuals to get them to go over the edge. We have seen groups of adults and kids end up you know, 25 or 50 in a brawl, a physical brawl. How does that happen? Were they hit with frequencies? Okay, bring us, you know, closer and closer to election 2020. Do you see what I'm getting at? I hope you do. All right, so no evidence, but Americans don't need it. They don't even think in terms of evidence now. They just hear or read the headline and get scared. A fearful people are easily manipulated and easily triggered. And yes, um, some media reports have gone as far as to say, even say, Actual foreign meddling is not necessary because all one needs is the appearance of it. The fear factor. <laughs> that means we're not in good shape. The goal of these fear-inducing narratives, of course, well, I'm scared I don't want to feel scared. And you're telling me that you'll provide my safety. You'll protect me. So I'll hand over all of my rights and freedom for that security. Well, you got us here. The goal of that narrative, the narrative, the election 2020, the foreign interference. And what is it? It's not to protect people. But it's actually crafted, and if it continues and continues and continues, and then maybe stops, you know, dead in its tracks, maybe a month before the election, they may 
make their simulation go real. But it is for the players, intelligence community, national security apparatus, the globalists, to take further control. And we may be looking at the ultimate in a few months from now to end American democracy and hand almost total power to the national security state. They've already blamed China, Russia, Iran. That's the simulation. Have you heard mainstream media? China, Iran, Russia, foreign interference in the election in 2020. So let me, um, the simulation involved cyber reason, American Israeli intelligence, and what is interesting about these articles is that it really does go into detail, and she really maps out all of the characters in play here, the direct and indirect players, mainstream media, you know, the experts that they have on. So if you don't know the game, you might want to read these articles. Election Day 2020, 32 Americans dead, 200 injured, over 200. Martial law declared, the election itself canceled. While this horrific scenario seems more like the plot of a Hollywood film, yeah, that was the recent simulation examining the preparedness of U.S. officials from the FBI, Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Secret Service, orchestrated by a private company. All right. Um, those fears have since been preyed upon by neoconservative groups in the U.S. military industrial complex, the interference, foreign interference, Russia, Russia, Russia. Oh, my God. Well, it hasn't stopped, guys. It's not, it has not stopped. They've continued it. So, here, Operation Blackout. Set in a fictional swing state, adversaria, and pitted ethical hackers from cyber reason against a team of federal and local law enforcement officials. The opposing teams were supervised by a white team composed of members of Cyber Reason staff and Ari Schwartz. Ari Schwartz, a former member of the White House's National Security Council and the National Institute of Standards and Technology, who set the rules of the simulation. Neocons. Um... And he would ultimately decide its outcome. So Schwartz also used used to work for the Center for Democracy and Technology, a major backer of Microsoft's election guard. The censorship is going to get really hard to take, guys. We've got the news guard. We've got the independent fact checkers on social media that are already showing their face, slapping digital uh, the, these digital placards that say false information, uh, the deleting of information. Microsoft is also a big player. The selection guard and news guard and, and Trump is a player. But hackers targeting election software, yes. Oh, wait, no. Iowa, chaos, fiasco, what's going on? Oh, smartphone app, well, didn't quite work. Oh, but there's more, those headlines that came out today. But that's not the simulation. The simulation is civilian infrastructure, psychological operations against the American citizens targeting Americans, targeting the infrastructure, power grid, 
Um, <clears throat> but I think Iowa was actually a, a real live drill. <laughs> I think it was purposely done to see what would happen with Americans with the chaos. And they can, you know, tweak their narrative of interference around it. And, you know, have people like um, Maddow come out and say uh, that the chaos, the shambles, the fiasco, 4chan is responsible for that. You know what that is? Trump supporters. 4chan, Q, Trump supporters. She comes out and actually says, 4chan was the reason. Because, well, Trump supporters, they clogged up the Iowa Democratic Party phone lines. Now, if you don't know any of the details about what's going on in Iowa, uh, then check it out. Um, what she is doing is blaming Trump supporters. She says, for Chan, that's Q. Q is Trump supporters. I'm scared for you guys. Four Channers were blamed for calling Democratic Party phone lines to sow confusion despite it being acknowledged that this occurred after the problem with the app. And look, she just came out boldly and lied, scapegoated Trump supporters. And earlier in the day, uh, her outfit of propagandists, MSNBC, had already reported, they, they discounted that, well, they didn't even have to say that it, because 4chan was not, 4chan has not been on anybody's radar, but she's going to come out and say that, inciting the emotions of her team members. We're looking at the Hunger Games. I'm not kidding. Playing out. And, you know, I should say this before I go on. Remove all identifiers of yourself. Don't walk around with a MAGA hat. Don't walk around with that sweatshirt, you know. Um, you got bumpers, stickers on your car, take them off. Even, even Christian identifiers. I'm not kidding, because they've got maps. Well, the Southern Poverty Law Center you know, has their maps of all the hate groups. And, well... Do you know how many churches? I just randomly chose some of these. Um, but they're clearly not, you know, hate groups at all. But they post this map, 1,020 hate groups across the U U.S. And it, would it be surprising that some nut job comes over here and goes through the hate groups, the Nazis, the white supremacists, those who hate the LGBT crowd. Well, this is where we're at. This has been the shaping of the American mindset. They got the maps. I mean, churches they claim are hate groups. And that it's kind of scary, guys. You know, it's... Uh, when you know and you put all, you know, the pieces together, you realize, oof, we're not in good shape. So here's the Trump hate map. Now... Trump supporters, Trump. They can't access Trump. Where have they been targeting their hate? Because it's their hate and intolerance. Um, where have they been dishing it out? Conservatives, 
those on the right, Trump supporters. If things don't go their way, election 2020, could you not foresee things getting really out of hand? When you see articles like this, the salon, okay. Um, Donald Trump and the Republican Party hate America. It's time to say it. Patriots, the last refuge of scoundrels. Who are the scoundrels? Trump supporters. And look, this is how you're portrayed. America has collapsed into a prone position. However, where the scoundrels are so brazen in their inhumanity, so bold in their indifference to suffering, so barbaric in their refusal to compromise for the sake of their own country. And we already know there's an awful lot of people who do not know how to separate out the characteristics of a group and then separate out the individuals within that group and you assess them individually. No, it's group hate. The Salon. People read these articles and they believe what they're reading in these liberal publications because they've actually been propped up as real journalists and they think that they're smart. So they believe this. They believe this. They believe you are completely and utterly indifferent to suffering. I watched a video yesterday. It was campus reform. A whole lot of protesting of Charlie Kirk. I'd never heard of the guy. Laura Trump coming to speak at this university in, in North Carolina. And there they were, the social justice warriors. And listening to them, it was frightening to see how programmed they are. And one guy said, oh, this goes far beyond, you know, they being racist. He said, they shouldn't be allowed to live. They shouldn't be allowed to live. When the guy who was doing the interviewing um, from the Campus Reform channel asked a whole lot of them, well, why do you think he's racist? Not one person could answer, but it didn't matter. It's what they felt, and they were there thinking that they are the tolerant, thinking that they are the loving? Do you see how warped Americans are now? Okay. So, we've already had our own programming. We continue to get the programming of mainstream media. And The hacker team was led by Cyber Reason, co-founder, uh, Stream Emmett, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name, a former contractor for Israeli government agencies and a former operative for the elite Israeli military intelligence unit, 8200, best known for its cyber offenses against other governments. And Stream, Stream Emmett said, in a country as fragmented as the United States, the number of people needed to influence an election is surprisingly small. And we are fragmented because we've been so programmed to hate one another, to fight one another. And today, to have an opposing view, well, you don't get to have one because there's only one view and it's that official view. And if you don't go along, then you get attacked. So he also said, we attempted to create havoc and show law enforcement that protecting the electoral, electoral process is much more than a machine. 
So his team completely devastated the U.S. law enforcement team in Operation Blackout by not only causing chaos, but murdering numerous civilians. Hackers took control of city buses, ramming them into civilians waiting in line at a polling station, polling stations, killing 32, injuring over 200. They also took control of city traffic lights in order to cause traffic accidents, used so-called deep fakes, you know, those videos that we hear, mainstream media, going on and on and on. Social media con um, companies, they have to step up, you know, their protection of the American people and get rid of those deep fake videos and the misinformation and the censorship is going to get really tight. So, yeah, used so-called deep fakes to conduct psychological operations on the populace and created fake bomb threats posing as the terror group ISIS, which incidentally has its own ties to Israel, um, Israeli intelligence and U.S. intelligence. Uh, telecom networks, news outlets within the within adversaria were also hacked and flooded with deep fakes aimed at spreading disinformation and panic among U.S. citizens. Well, the end result, martial law declared, the election canceled, and voila, they got us. The door closes, and then Americans will get to see. Oh, no, they won't see it, actually. They'll believe everything is going on to protect them. And they will listen to their authority members, their authority uh, figures. They will take the orders and march along. Prior to that, Let's say you just hit that line of voters waiting to vote with a particular frequency. Let's say we get a frequency going through their smartphones. So either way, whatever happens, the team that is most rational and tolerant actually the red team has to deal with that blue team who are batshit crazy but that's not to be taken as funny it's to be taken as they are violent their crazy is violence so the supervising team composed of Cyber Reason employees and former NSC member Ari Schwartz decided that the outcome of the face-off between the hacker and law enforcement teams was the outright cancellation of the election, declaration of martial law by authorities, the growth of public fear regarding terrorism, and allegations of U.S. government collusion with a foreign actor. Mm. U.S. government collusion. Well, in their simulation, they couldn't say Trump. But in real life, they will. Because it's not done. Foreign actor. Russia, China, Iran. Cyber Reason has stated that they will soon conduct another 2020 election simulation with federal authorities as the election draws closer. So, what is mainstream media doing here? Hmm, Iowa. Confusion. Chaos. Can't 
figure out who won. Technology. Was it hacked? No. It was... Look, all of the problems <laughs> were apparent, existing. Uh, they already manifested before uh, district heads of the DNC were asked to call in their votes or totals and nobody could get through or they were put on hold for an hour and then, well, got disconnected. Could it have been, you know, our telecommunications industry playing around with all of that or the whole thing, I believe, was staged to set Americans up for a whole lot of chaos coming down the road. And they do, they do check the responses. Let's get that data. Let's see. And then you got these nut jobs. And unfortunately, Americans can't see through these crazy people. They can't see them for who they are. 4chan means Trump supporters. Um, yeah, let's write up Trump supporters as inhumane, indifferent to suffering. So why wouldn't you want to take out somebody who's like that? <laughs> but that's what this guy is. This is who he is. And he's proven himself to be inhumane, indifferent to suffering over and over and over again. You know, the no evidence thing, very interesting. Um, I just thought, you know, he comes into office and it's like, whoa, he's bombing Syria. So he announces to the American people, Assad, that animal, he used chemical weapons against his own people. So I bombed him. No evidence presented at all. And you know, Trump supporters, I didn't hear you asking for it. So, um, he, he really proved the no evidence it's just not necessary anymore because we can just tell the American people anything we want. They don't think they're so programmed already to just accept everything. They don't even care if it's lies. They don't care uh, about the consequences of those lies. They don't care about anything, so we can do anything. And we'll still get, you know, applause. We'll still get their vote. Well, when you have an American people like that, you, you, you can't expect the country to turn out real healthy. Texas Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, Iowa caucus voting. Oh, boy. Well, yeah. I believe that Russia has been engaged in and interfering with a number of our elections dealing with the 2016 election. Russia? It's Russia? It wasn't that smartphone app? It's Russia. Who, I guess now Putin, I don't know, sitting in a cornfield. and Okay, we've got crazy people. But she told that to the FBI director, Christopher Rye, or Ray, uh, and he, he said, yep, I think you're quite right. I believe that Russia has been engaged in and interfering with a number of our elections. W with the 2016 election, Ray responded, okay, I'm sorry, it's, it is February 6, 2020. Okay, I get confused because, well, they could go back and forth, 2016, 2020. All right, Ray said this, we are also concerned about potential Russian interference with our elections. 
That's why I created the Foreign Influence Tax Force, which is acutely focused on that topic among other nation states that are attempting to influence our elections. Democrats have faced criticism for not properly testing the voting system in Iowa. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I missed the, the, the real um, gem of the story. Sheila Jackson Lee said on Wednesday that Russia is responsible for the voting reporting vote reporting issues in Iowa okay so they faced criticism and very telling how can anyone trust you now a reporter yelled at the chairman of the state's democratic party how can anyone trust you now the breakdown in trust has been deliberate And it's going to be really broken down as we march closer and closer to election 2020. Americans, they will have a sense of, "Mm, can't trust anybody, don't feel really secure. I guess, uh, what's the point in voting? Because, well, they keep telling me Russia's going to interfere and uh, whatever the result is, well, How do I know that that's, that that result came about free and fair? Or was it Russia? And that's where all of this is bringing us. You know, New York City approves more 5G on street lamps, traffic poles, fiber, despite health and technical issues. I could see them ramping up that 5G infrastructure to get it all in place for election 2020. But the use of the frequencies, I'm going to pay close attention to radar because I think they're going to start using them even more powerfully to uh, render the American people even more unfit to fight anything. All right, here's another article. Where did our ads go? What the hell is this? Okie dokie. It's not just Iowa. Election tech. These are articles in the last 24 hours. Um, and they all talk about election security Well, it's precarious more than ever. Why didn't we do anything to secure the election process when this is what we were dealing with in 2016? Because we don't resolve anything. And Americans, well, either they just don't have the memory to realize that, you know, we are the United States. And... We've got a lot of tech here, and we are the richest country in the world, and, well, we're exceptional, and we're brilliant, and we're this and that, and why couldn't we figure out something to fix that, you know, those holes? But we didn't. Do you get it? Well, if you knew it was fixed, then they couldn't have martial law declared. They couldn't claim that it was interference by a foreign state, nation state actor. They couldn't pull off their false flag. Anxiety over the mechanics of this year's election has spiked following the disaster. That was the Iowa Democratic Caucus. The fiasco does have lawmakers spooked on a number of fronts. And it's increasingly becoming clear that the integrity of the nation's elections can be compromised in a variety of ways. After the phone number for reporting precinct results was posted online, 
supporters of President Donald Trump managed to flood phone lines and interfere with the counting of results. According to Bloomberg, that rag of mainstream media publication owned by Michael, who Michael, who happens to be a candidate for the Democrat side, and he's implicating the Trump supporters. We're going to see lies. Right now, we're already... I, I, I really... My, my head is just... Um, I'm living shell-shocked uh, it, more every single day with the outrageousness of the lies. And they're going to get more and more outrageous. And you know what? We're not even going to have an avenue to deal with it. <laughs> Supporters of President Donald Trump, you guys, you went in there. It's like, oh, good. Their app, it's not working. So let's, uh, let's organize. And what can we do? What can we do? We can flood the phone lines. All right. But people, Americans don't think anymore. They just read and go, okay, yeah. The country is more vulnerable to election interference than ever. Some worry with good reason that the worst is yet to come. Meltdown, Mark Rubio. Yeah, the meltdown hinted at how Russian and Chinese hackers could tamper with their setting you up for a very violent, chaotic election 2020. But they've got several common sense bills, Carol. How do you live in a country where nobody thinks anymore? Now, you guys think, I know. I'm talking about real life. I don't. The cost of securing our elections, $2.2 billion. Well, doesn't sound all that much. But Congress, well, they handled it poorly because, well, they were kind of obsessed with that impeachment thing. And, and they do, they never miss their vacation. So um, didn't have time, sorry. Read about the companies involved with this cyber reason. And Iowa, uh, the phone app, Shadow, and um, God, I can't even remember. It's Shadow, and I know one of you are going to drop it in the comment section. An assault on U.S. elections could occur at many levels of voting infrastructure. Attacks, well, they might be on election websites, government official officials' email accounts, voter registration systems, and even the voting machines themselves. Securing all of these systems throughout the country is a difficult task that involves not only technical improvements and cybersecurity, but also training and coordinating with local election officials on how their systems could be implicated by national security threats. <laughs> it, it sounds like it's a brand new country and they're just trying to figure out, hmm, the uh, election process and the voting. Uh, how can we do this? Like we've never done it before. Department of Homeland Security. Oh, biometrics. Biometrics will address states' security woes. Facial recognition. That's what we might just have to do, and the American people will say, okay, because I'm a responsible adult, and I believe that that is my obligation to vote. And I do it regularly. Every two years, every four years, because I'm a responsible American. That's my civic duty. Now, once I, you know, vote, well, you can go on and do whatever the hell you want to do, because I have no interest. You know, in the halls of Congress and that White House. Uh, yep, Department of Homeland Security to publish key security plans ahead of 2020. 
So all of the agencies, they're right there. And everything's urgent. Nothing is ready. We got to have a plan. We got to protect the American people from the foreign interference. But we're not well positioned to execute a nationwide strategy. Oh boy, size a Trump administration. It's a Trump creation. size has got the Protect 2020 strategic plan, which will focus on efforts to protect election infrastructure against foreign interference. One of those things that they're going to do, raise public awareness about foreign interference threats and share intelligence about potential threats. Why would they raise public awareness of interference that the public has nothing to do with or cannot prevent to scare, to degrade, to leave with no faith in the system, no confidence in the system, to confuse and to gut in the individual American any any confidence of security in the result that's what's going on with the raise public awareness the propagandists will be at it mainstream media NPR interviews Ron Wyden of Oregon sits on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Oh, he's long expressed those concerns about the security of 2020 elections. We're going to hear it over and over and over again. So, what did he say about Iowa? He contacted the DNC three times during the month of January, checking on issues. Uh, for example, whether anyone had tested the phone app. Huh. And I continue to have real questions about whether there was any testing. Uh, you know, untested phone app for delivering election results, kind of like asking a person off the street to safeguard nuclear codes. He never got a clear answer. He never got an answer. Okay. It's obvious when people do things that are so beyond the pale. Uh... It, this is not incompetence. This is a drill. Iowa was a drill. Now, there are always questions about design. There are always questions about testing. There are always questions about audits. And yeah, when you have an absence of comments from people who are independent experts in election security, you start asking some questions. The fact that we couldn't get any answers out of the top people at the DNC's DNC is very ominous. They didn't test the app. Oops, it failed. It's the Trump supporters. They did it. It's Russia. They did it. So, Wyden has been pushing very aggressively to have some cybersecurity standards, and unless you have cybersecurity standards for election infrastructure, and we're talking about everything from voter registration databases to hand-marked paper ballots to websites that can actually report results accurately, you're really in a potentially dangerous area. So in talking about Iowa, you know, yeah, there were problems with that smartphone, but you're not just talking about Iowa, are you? No, no. You're concerned about the overall vulnerability in the election infrastructure. Right now, the U.S. is not strong enough, or it has too many soft spots. What are you seeing, Ron? Hostile foreign governments wanting to influence the outcome of our election through hacks. Election technology hacked, shortchanged cybersecurity, and the infrastructure. Oh, Iran apparently is going to do the cybersecurity 
attacks, and they're going to bring down the power grid. Okay. Um, ISIS, too. Don't forget ISIS. Long lines on election day in communities across the country, and we have inadequate security. We're a friggin' police state, and we can't get the security going. <laughs> it's truly, oh boy, a joke. But it's not going to be a joke when the real event takes place. And suddenly, there's an absence of security for the American people. And there's terrorist attacks and cyber attacks and buses running into lines of Americans waiting to vote. All right. I will link below to everything. Yeah, it took an hour and 10 minutes, but you know what? You really need to consider your fellow Americans, the state they're in, the condition they're in. If you don't know how to read body language, facial expressions, um, kind of interpret tones of voices, you might want to start learning. Because if you have an awareness and you need to increase that awareness of your surroundings, especially when you're in crowds, you need to increase your own self-awareness so that you know how you think, you know what triggers you, and if you can read the body language and, and uh, facial expressions, and you have the ability to listen to tones of voices, you'll pick up when people are angry, tense, stress. And because you've done the work, you know how you think. You can, you can then, because you have a sense of self, which gives you a firm stance in the world. You're not shaken, but you're very cautious and you protect your own self. And you can feel the anger, you can feel the tension, you can feel what's going on. You see people who are not quite right. You don't say anything or do anything to inflame them, trigger them more. You do, you know, that, uh, well, love you, love you, gotta go. And you get out of there. We're not living in a healthy country. So, yeah, remove the identifiers um, that identify who you are because you've seen it already with the Trump supporters getting attacked. The closer we get to election 2020, I think we're going to be seeing more and more of that tension and stress. You know, the guy wasn't impeached. They're not happy about that. Who do they have to take it out on? All links are below.